Power rankings, who has knocked Gerard Bowen off top spot? How telling a week could this round of fixtures be at the end of the season? Manchester City were stunned at home by Antonio Conte's inspired Tottenham side, spearheaded by Harry Kane, more on him later, while at the other end of the table, there were huge wins for Watford and Burnley. Newcastle maintained their rich vein of form with a hard-fought point against Europe chasing West Ham, while lowly Everton were sunk in Southampton. Arsenal and Chelsea picked up slender wins over London rivals Brentford and Crystal Palace and Liverpool survived a brief second-half scare. The Reds went a goal down to basement boys Norwich in the second half, but fought back magnificently to keep the pressure on City. So, with that in mind, meet your latest top 10 of our power rankings. 1. Bowen 2. Sterling 3. De Bruyne 4. Jimenez 5. Fabinho 6. Burns 7. Ramsey 8. Trippier 9. Ward Pros 10. Kilman I have a feeling Liverpool's new boy might become a regular feature of this list. He has taken to life on Merseyside like a duck to water and was given a start against Norwich with both Diogo Jota and Roberto Firmino out injured. While Liverpool struggled to break down the Canaries for the first hour, Diaz was constantly on the move and looked extremely sharp. After Sadio Mane and Mo Salah had put the Reds back in front, Diaz then netted his first goal for the club. It was a wonderfully timed run, picked out by Jordan Henderson and Diaz took one look up before chipping the ball into the far corner. The intelligence, pace and composure Liverpool spent pounds 37 million on in January was there for all to see, and he already looks a brilliant talent. If Jota and Firmino are out for a prolonged spell, Diaz will have to carry an attacking burden Klopp did not want to put on him straight away, but he has already proven the quality is there to be relied upon. The Newcastle fan, now Magby's centre-back, entered the list last week for a commanding display in the win over Aston Villa. He was at the heart of their reargward effort again in the draw against West Ham. Although he did get booked for rash challenge on Gerard Bowen, the towering defender was a colossus once more, and Eddie Howe will be delighted at the way he's shored things up at the back. The Magbies have been like a sieve defensively this season, but Byrne is a real presence and plays with all the passion of a fan of his boyhood club. With Kieran Trippier out injured, the onus is on him as one of the new signings to make the difference in the coming weeks, and he's started superbly. Jadon Sancho showed all the skill, timing and composure that made him top of United's wanted list when he was thriving at Borussia Dortmund. He was the best player on the pitch at Elland Road, showing he could handle the heat of the rivalry game with ice in his veins. Sancho delivered a perfect chipped ball for Bruno Fernandes to make it 2-0 on the stroke of halftime. And he was again on hand to put on an assist when his side needed it, teeing up Fred to score the goal that put United back in command. Sancho has rightly had his critics but really seems to be picking up momentum now and the confidence is there again. Ralph Rangnick will hope he can continue in the same fashion as his side aim to lock down a place in the top four this term. Dyer is becoming a really important player under Antonio Conte at Tottenham and was at the heart of their defensive effort at Man City. Alongside Christian Romero, Dyer tracked runners, made clearances and stood firm in the face of an onslaught. City did score twice but neither were Dyer's fault and his recent rejuvenation is a huge boost for England too. After flirting with life in midfield for a time, centre-back appears to be a much better fit for him, and if there's a manager who can turn him into a miserly defender, it is Conte. The pressure came in wave after wave at City, and if it hadn't been for Harry Kane's heroics, Dyer would have been up there for man of the match. A quieter afternoon for the Wolves striker moved him down a couple of spots, but his hold-up play was still important in the win over Leicester. He teed up Ruben Neves with a lovely cushion ball back into the Portuguese's path in the first half, duly converted to give them the lead. Jimenez remains the focal point of the team up front, and the European charge is well underway for Bruno Lage's men. He's starting to look like the player he was before that horrendous head injury sidelined him. He played the full 90 minutes and worked tirelessly against the Foxes on Sunday to help move the Molyneux club up to 7th in the Premier League. Those painful Afghan memories are fading away with every goal back at Liverpool and Salah scored another absolute beauty for the Reds. It was his 150th goal for the club and summed him up, putting them in the lead by sending two Norwich players the wrong way, wrong footing the goalkeeper and stroking the ball into the net. Salah remains the most potent threat in a team full of attacking weapons. He had quiet spells against Norwich, but there's no way opposition sides can keep him out of the action for a full game. Salah had so much to do when the ball fell to him, but manufactured the goal on his own and almost netted a similar individual effort to his incredible one against Man City earlier this season. 
An off afternoon for Sterling, who had shot into the power rankings last week following his brilliant hat trick. He was unable to unlock the Tottenham defense on a frustrating afternoon and has moved down two spots as a result. Sterling was the only attacker Pep Guardiola chose to substitute off in the game, opting to bring on Riyad Mahrez, who converted the penalty to make it 2-2. This is only likely to be a small bump in the road for the England winger, and he has looked back to his best recently. There was a time when his days looked numbered at the club, but if City go on to win one or more trophies this season, he is likely to play a major role. As with Sterling, De Bruyne cut a frustrated figure for much of the afternoon against Spurs. City enjoyed more than 70% possession, but could only muster four shots on target all game. Some of that responsibility must lie with the Belgian as their most creative midfield player. The City juggernaut will roll on regardless, and Guardiola was not overly disappointed with the performance. De Bruyne will be back to the fore when City travel to face struggling Everton next, and the champions will expect to find far more joy in the final third. Bowen has been a revelation this season, but is knocked off top spot in the power rankings this week. There were a couple of moments against Newcastle when he turned a defender to fire a pot shot in, but the Englishman was unable to threaten much. To expect a goal contribution from the Whiteman every week is asking a lot, but he will soon build on his eight goals and assists this season. Next up for David Moyes' men is another home game, but against in-form Wolves, who have one of the stingiest defenses in the league. Bowen will have his work cut out if he is to avoid sliding further down our list next week. From nowhere, Kane romps into top spot. While there's no question he benefited from last week's top five having a drop in performances, the quality of his showing at the Etihad was remarkably high. Perhaps it came somewhat out of the blue as this season has been a struggle at times for the England striker. But he showed just why City were so interested in signing him in the summer, and although he denied it, there must have been an extra edge, wanting to justify himself. His pass around the corner for Son led to the first goal, and was expertly executed, and the deftness of touch to double Spurs lead was magnificent. He only needed sniff late in the game to snatch all three points, darting across his marker to thump a header home and stun the home fans. Pep Guardiola and Craig Pawson looked shell-shocked on the sidelines, but the day belonged to Kane and Spurs.